We're going to talk about side surfing in holes today. So here I am side surfing, meaning my, and what I'm doing is my upstream edge is lifted, my downstream blade is ready to take a stroke or do something, my posture is upright and I'm looking upstream. Okay, so notice how my gaze is upstream and uh, so that I stay in the hole. Even when I'm trying to spin, I keep my gaze upstream until I very quickly change it and I'm looking back upstream except over the other shoulder. And now I'm in position side surfing again with my upstream edge lifted, my downstream blade ready to take a stroke. And right here, I do take a stroke and that stroke is to come back to center, but it could also be to get to the edge of the hole. Let's talk about the hole. Let's look at this hole. So the middle is where the foam pile is strongest. You're not gonna get out from there. But if you notice on surfer's right, there's a shoulder. There's a downstream V that's coming through that right side. It's called the shoulder. That's where you can get out of the hole. That's where spins happen, right? And it could be on either side, depending on what the hole looks like. Okay, so you're always wanting to have enough skill and move your paddle, be able to move your paddle in the foam pile and have enough stability and edge to get yourself to the edge of the hole, to the shoulders of the hole. So here I go, I enter, not too much speed, and right at the corner, right? So I, uh, and then I let my bow turn downstream and here I have to be ready to take that hit of the foam pile. And how I do that is my posture, my core, and my good edge control, right? Strong quadratus lumborum. So here I'm looking upstream and then I turn, my vision is everything. And here I kind of get stuck because I'm not looking upstream enough. So then I challenge myself to do a clean so then I really rotate my body and vision and look up and my boat really just follows smoothly, right? And then I engage my downstream blade to bring it around, okay? Okay, let's talk about how to build the body awareness and strength to actually perform this, okay? So the next time you're out in your boat on flat water, I want you to be in your boat and I want you to weight one butt cheek, just weight it. So I mean like that's just like setting the weight down into the butt, okay? And then you're gonna engage the opposite side. So my left butt cheek is weighted and I'm engaging this side body so that my upper body stays nice and tall, okay? And I hold, okay? What I'm doing is I'm engaging this, quad, this muscle called the quadratus lumborum right in here. And its main function is just to hike the hip. That's all it does. Okay, so you want that to be nice and strong. And then you release and then you go other side. Weight the other butt cheek, engage the side body, engage the quadratus lumborum, and hold, staying nice and upright. So we're not leaning over, because when we lean over with our upper body, we flip. Okay, so this is part of edge control. And then we release. Then what you want to challenge yourself eventually is you weight your butt cheek, engage the side body in that quadratus lumborum. Okay? And by the way, quadratus lumborum, I'm talking about like right in here. Okay. And then you lift up with that thigh brace. So the thigh brace is here. You actually lift and that's going to be like, ooh. okay, you might feel a little wobbly. You keep your paddle right here. And then you really have to engage the side body to counteract even more. So it's all in here. This is going to be your stabilizers, right? And then release, and then you do the same thing on the other side, okay? The third is I would place, if this is my paddle, I would just place it flat on the water and just keep a light, very light. Here's the deal. This is why we're practicing this. Your paddle doesn't keep you upright, yeah? It's your body. It's your hips. Just like in the roll, the paddle doesn't roll you up. Your hips do. In side surfing, your paddle is not what holds you up, right? That's actually a mistake. When you see people stuck on their sides and not able to go anywhere, it's because they won't, they're not actually holding themselves up in the hole against the foam pile. Like, you know, if this is the foam pile, right? They're trying to just dig their paddle and dig and like, just like brace, brace. And, and eventually the water's going to let go. The water's not solid. You can't brace against it forever. You have to have integrity and strength in here.
and in here to actually function in a hole and in a side surfing and be able to move one direction or another, meaning forwards or backwards. Okay, so the last thing is you put your paddle down on the water. You just lightly keep your hand on it. You don't put weight on it because you have enough strength and integrity in here to keep yourself up. Weight the butt cheek, and then you try and then you lift up and you try and tuck your boat into your cockpit rim. Sorry, your cockpit rim into your shoulder and put your hand on your boat. Again, it's strengthening the side body even more. And then release. Okay, so this is a really fun, uh, I don't know if it's fun, but it's what I did when I freestyle, when I competed in freestyle. And when I did cartwheeling, clean spins, clean cartwheels, those were were winning moves at the time. And that's what we did to practice. Um, being able to maintain an edge and feel strong and steady on edge without our paddle. I really want you to um, think about when you go in and side surf a hole, even especially little holes, you can practice this. Do not plant your paddle. Just keep your paddle up and see if you can just roll with the bounces, <laughs> right? on edge without relying on your paddle. That's gonna go a long way to, um, to improving your skill, building your skill, building your strength, okay? So there's some flat water and there's the foundation for you to do what we just talked about, what you just saw on, in the holes, um, surfing. Last thing I will say, okay, when I talked about, when I said I was kind of stuck, so if I'm backwards in the hole, so, okay, side surfing, looking, um, looking upstream, and then my boat starts to turn with the shoulder of the wave, and right here I need to look back. But see, what I was doing was kind of being tentative, is looking back, right? This isn't really looking back. This is, this is like looking over my shoulder. And then what I did is when I moved my paddle to do a clean, see how all of a sudden my, my whole body engaged. And when that happens, then it frees up the boat to actually follow, okay, back. All right, so when I talk about vision in a hole and looking upstream, if I'm side surfing, it's not just this, just a little gaze over the shoulder, it's this. Okay, so you, you might wanna have your paddle over here on the foam pile, this is upstream, this is downstream foam pile, but you can still be looking, right? And then when you start to turn, you keep looking, and then quick, you turn back, and you're ready, and the boat will follow. Oh, that was kind of fun. So I hope that clarifies, and uh, yeah, that's some, some of the technical aspects of it. So here is another example. I'm going to jet ferry across this hole, which is another great way to practice, and you don't have to commit to actually surfing the hole. So I come in right at the corner, let my bow drop. My body right here is steady, right? My edge is strong so that I am ready for that foam pile and I allow it to jet ferry me across to the other side. So I hope this was helpful for you in side surfing and also building the strength and the integrity in your body and your edge control to be able to take hits like you saw in my pillow rock run, right? So it's all related. That's why play boating is awesome for your river running skills. So if you get out there and practice this stuff, have fun and enjoy.